G'day there. My name's Andrew. We're going to talk about the Behringer controllers in Studio One today. Special hello, Johnny in Chicago. How you going, mate? Let's talk about these Behringer controllers. Um, just quickly, I'll show you my setup so you can see whether or not we're on the same page. The computer's in the other room, just for fan noise, which is over here. There's a little computer. And I've got a few bits and pieces lying around here. But basically, I've got the rotator over here next to the keyboard, which is really good. And I've got the fader set up here on the desk. Prior to today, I was running the rotator as the USB and the fader on the, on the MIDI connection into the, uh, into the RMEs down there. But uh, after the update 1.6.2 and the rotator started working really well, in particular following the automation points after creating an automation track, I tried it with the, with the fader and I found we, we were still having problems there. So I tried the fader in USB mode. Now normally I've found that if I run both of them in USB mode, occasionally there's a conflict I'm not sure whether we're going to have that. It's a little bit too early to find out because I've just set it up today. But so far, so good. There are a couple of things that uh, I need to show you that, that are working really well. Uh, firstly, let's talk about the modes that I've got here. You can see here I'm, I'm using the Baby Huey there. That, that's just set up with, with the standard Huey template in Studio One. This one here is actually set up as a generic controller, not the BCR. The one that's in the uh, the template that's in Studio One, it appears to be broken. It doesn't appear to be be working in any way. Can't get it to work. But it's fairly simple to set up a few uh, control knobs. In any in any case, I only use you know a few knobs for each synthesizer parameter, so it's it's not a big deal. Um, also, we're running this one is U One. and U2 over here on the rotator. So that's got all that stuff out of the way. Um, okay, let's have a look at the way it works with the song. Now I haven't bothered to do a, a screen capture, so we'll just have to use the camera. Bit of a pain in the ass, but you'll be able to see what's happening. I've got a test song here that's, uh, that I set up to work on this controller problem and the faders are all over the place because I've been playing with them so the balance is all out but uh, it serves its purpose ah, that was that one there so I've just got a cork synth set up here doing an arpeggio pattern. As you can see we've got uh, a fader movement there. We've also got feedback running. Not a problem. And also our, our transport controls work perfectly. Very smooth operation. Very nice. Look at that. Beautiful. No delay. Um, so let me set up a basic mix here, so we get the sounds. We'll have a listen to this. What's that? That's guitar. Guitar one, guitar two, and bass. So that's the song, so I'll just kill the sound there. We're looking here though. I've got an automation running here. I've actually put in a crazy kind of a kind of a volume curve on this to show this. Working really well. And so I see over here we've got what is it? Um, I've chosen to put an automation on the drum fader. That's working really well. Also, what have I done here? I've got a couple of automation points here. 
on the synth. I'm going to scroll through those. So we've got, um, what's that? That's the arpeggio latch. There's the MIDI. And that's the VCF cutoff. And the VCF resonance. And where? Hello, yeah, yeah. Too much zoom, man. Too much zoom. Over here, you can see that we are following very well, very nicely. <laughs> So that works really well. Uh, I'm quite wrapped about that because there's been um, a huge obstacle in Studio One to get these external controllers working. Um, anyone who's got a Behringer, of course, it's been a, a huge pain. So I hope you found this video helpful in some way if you're using the Behringers. And um, let me know what you think. So there you go. See you later.